Honda's Jet Lawrence came into round four. Lucas Soil Pro Motocross at high point, riding a three race win streak. But it's his brother Hunter who turned the tables, uh, winning the first moto earlier today as the Lawrence Brothers show rolls on. 250 Moto 2 Gate Drop is next. We're back for round four. Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship sanctioned by AMA Pro Racing. It is the Lucas Stabilizer High Point National. Yeah, Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. These hillsides, these fans have seen a lot of great racing through the years, and we're going to put on another show for them. Jason Wygan and the six-time AMA National Champion, the Hall of Famer, Brock Glover. And you've had some great times at High Point as well. Great to have all the legends in and out of the booth as we celebrate 50 years of professional motocross. And out of all the years you've seen, Brock, this year is really living up to a 50th anniversary celebration. The racing has been phenomenal in this 250 class. We have a wonderful crowd here. And the one thing about High Point, yeah. it's, it's a long tradition since 1977. You have such a knowledgeable crowd. These are, their motocross IQ is very high, you know, and it's just fun and they just come out here and they cheer on the riders. They know what's going on and uh, the riders love racing in front of them. Oh yeah, and they put on a great show for those fans an hour ago. We'll give you the highlights of 250 moto number one. Kawasaki's up front early here. Pennsylvania's own Seth Hamaker on the 47 has never raced a pro race at this track. And he makes the home state people happy with that hole shot. But it wasn't long before he was challenged. His teammate Shimoda was there. But Michael Mosman is maybe the fastest rider in this class as of late. He takes the lead. He takes the lead here. But uh, unfortunately, Michael just uh, gets out front and then you know, something happens. Seems like it's a broken yep. record story. And then you see Hunter Lawrence right here making a great pass around the outside of early leader, Seth Hamaker. That would put Lawrence into second. Mosman had already gotten around both of these riders. And there it is, Mosman yep. on the ground. And Hunter Lawrence is in the lead. Yeah, it's just frustrating. I know he's getting frustrated himself for doing this. It's either a bike problem keeps him from winning or a t simple mistake on his own. And he couldn't quite find that speed again as Jet Lawrence starts putting it together. He gets around Moseman after Moseman got up from the crash. And he kept going. Going to get Hamaker here. And that's going to make it a Lawrence Brothers 1-2 again. Five times in seven motos this year. Late in the race, Shimoda gets around his teammate Hamaker. This went down to the last lap for a third. Shimoda, the number 30, is going to edge his teammate out, rider out of Japan. You mentioned it, all international podium here. Yeah, it's a complete, not an, not an American on Father's Day, but you know what? The Lawrence brothers gave their father, Darren, a great one, too. And then Joe Shimoda finishes out to round out that international podium. Yep, that's right around of Japan. Uh, Hamaker, home state native fourth. Mosman after the fall, fifth. Max Boland, a good ride for sixth. Hampshire coming back from injury, seventh. Cooper Thrasher Brown, top 10. Moto 2 coming your way, but let's reintroduce Jason Thomas to the broadcast. JT, what's happening trackside? So at the end of Moto 1, you were mentioned that uh, Hunter Lawrence and Joe Shimoda, excuse me, Jet Lawrence and Joe Shimoda both had an issue getting up to speed early. Now in the second moto, I expect both of them to be working on finding that best lap time in the first half of the race so they can keep a guy like Hunter Lawrence from disappearing off into the sunset. Not easy to do on this track, though. That's what the riders were saying. Well, there's no question. Jet made a comment in the first motor at the podium that he finally he found some better lines towards. Sometimes that is an advantage when you're working your way up through the pack that to have to try alternative lines that actually you find out which ones work and which ones don't. When you try a line and the pass works, hey, that one worked. Obviously, if you try and you lose distance, it doesn't. So Jet puts all those pieces of that puzzle together about mid-race, starts clicking off the quick laps and gets his way to the front. So there is Shimoda on the 30. Has never won an overall victory. If he could get a moto win here, might be able to pull that off. Lot on the line in the 250 division. Jet Lawrence has won all three overalls to start the year. See if he can keep this going. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Lucas Oil. Keep that engine alive. General Tire. For whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And by Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. We're back. Those are the trophies on the line for the eventual season champions in both our 250 and 450 classes. Jason Wygant, Brock Glover, Jason Thomas to give you the call. Let's give you the MX versus ATV Legends track map. First, we'll give you the overhead, and then we'll use our drone to get a little bit closer. And Brock, you can tell what High Point's all about. Yeah, we talk about this called the Country Club Motocross, and you can see why right there. It has a water hazard on the bottom. We have a beautiful <laughs> turf. But uh, the one thing you do see, this track is developing a lot of lines and a lot of ruts, and those are changing throughout the race. 
So it's important for the riders to be able to adapt. Right there, you've got maybe eight or 10 different options, and which one you choose is going to be the difference between you making a pass or holding your position or possibly winning or losing the race. So it's uh, conditions are terrific, no dust, great racing, lots of passing going on. Uh, Probably the most frustrating thing for a rider is when it becomes a one-liner, and this is anything but that. K10 Keys of the Moto falls right into what you were talking about. Yeah, good starts, and that means for both motos. So these riders that have had good races and good motos, you see one rider like we saw last week with uh, where a rider would get a whole shot. You got eat, you know uh, Kitchen was getting the whole shot, got the whole shot, won the race, came back, and uh, was not able to back it up. And so it's important to get whole shots both motos. And as we talked about, the lines are always changing around High Point Raceway, and so it's important to pick the right lines. Hey, we're talking the history of the sport this year in our 50th anniversary celebration. We gotta give a shout out to the. 500 class, no longer part of Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, but our own Brock Lover is the only three-time champion ever. And you like to point out that, I mean, the 500s are gone now, but there was a time, especially in the early days of the sport, that was the creme de la creme, the 500s. Well, it was kind of known as the King's Classic, particularly in the Grand Prix in Europe. I mean, Roger DeCoster, five-time world champion, Brad Lackey, you thought Hakey Mikola, the people like this, and then Honda, even when they went HRC back to team, they only backed him in the 500s. So the premier class used to be the 500 class in the Grand Prix. Unfortunately, uh, things changed. In, in the sport, but uh, I loved riding them. I had great battles with guys like David Bailey right oh, here. Oh, there we go. You and this Bailey battling This was nearly a end. photo finish right here at High Point, and uh, we, we exchanged strange rubber and, and, and battles and passed it back and forth the whole time there. That was 1984, and uh, just fond memories, no question about riding those big old beasts around I, this I'm track. Amazed. <laughs> I'm looking at this air-cooled Yamaha, those old forks and everything, and you have fond memories. Steel handlebars, bro. Okay, to be realistic, <laughs> I think I, I wake up with cold sweat sometimes. Okay. When, if I've ever dreamed about that time, is I wake up with cold sweat. All but right. uh, it was, uh, I, I, again, I loved riding the more powerful bikes, and, and uh, it was a lot of fun. 1993 was the last year we had a 500 national championship. Nowadays, we switch from those two strokes to four strokes. So it's 250cc, four strokes on the line, second moto of the day, 30 minutes and two laps, 40 riders on the gate. We showed you the highlights. We'll take those results. We'll add these results. That's your overall winner. That's the one thing that hasn't changed in the motocross, the two-moto format. Fly Racing 32nd card is up. So Hunter Lawrence looking for the overall win. He's got the first moto now. He won the second moto last week. The fourth and moto one is what held him back. Would not surprise anyone if the rider to end Chet Lawrence's win streak would be his brother Hunter. Probably top of the list. Yep, we'll see here shortly what kind of start he gets. That's the key, the key to the motos right here. He That's needs right. a good start. There it is in the 96. Let's go racing at high point. Yeah, little jump right there. Mm -hmm. Kind of tw kind of twitched a little early. We'll see if he can salvage it. Just yep. Seth Hamaker again. Yep. Got two Lawrence brothers in second and third. Hamaker grabs another repeat hole shot. Yeah, two hole shots for the Pennsylvanian at his home track. But somehow Hunter Lawrence emerges in second despite that bad jump off the line. He did, and actually it looked like Jet was holding second. Hunter made a couple of good moves in that first corner. And then the second corner, too. And here's another corner that was very strong. Now, they're both of those right-handers at the bottom of the hill, you've seen Hunter Lawrence do some good line selection and come out making passes in the previous moto, so we'll see if he can do it again here. So he salvaged it with a bad jump. Yep. Ooh, that line was creative. He, yep, very creative. So Hunter is a veteran. He's had a lot of a lot of laps under his belt in both over in Europe and racing the GPs and now here in the United States, and he's a savvy rider, and again, in this class, he's definitely the veteran. Beta drone cam following Seth Hamaker again, the Pennsylvania native to the lead. Every time I can't figure out what Hunter's doing, and then by the time you get to the end, you're like, oh, that made sense. Yeah, he's, he did. He took advantage of that parade lap. He looked at a lot of the outside lines, carry a lot of speed. We talked about that earlier in the first moto, but again, I'll reiterate on it. Uh, it there are a lot of elevation changes here. On the smaller bore bikes, you do need to carry cornering speed, especially the exit of the corner. So you want to take a, many times the wide line to be carrying more speed as you lead up to a long power robbing uphill. And so here's coming up another one right here on this outside. Steepest ball. Oh, Hamaker! Hamaker tumbles there, tucks the front. Ah, tough break. He was fourth in Moto One. You know, he'd like to get it up there on the overall podium today. So we're back to another Lawrence Brothers 1 2. But this is what we've wanted to see. 
We have not seen them start up front together yet this year. We're about to have a one-on-one -on -one duel. Yeah, we are. And then we talked about Hammaker. That was a section where we talked about coming out of the shade, uh, sun into the shade, back and forth, the tree shade, some of those ruts. Don't always have the best visibility. I'm not sure if that caused anything, but there's a chance it did. Okay, so it's going to be Justin Cooper up to third, and we will show you the crash with Seth Hammaker right here. Right, coming down here, you go into the shade right here, and it's not always easy to see coming from bright sunlight into those dark ruts, and they put probably put a little water down in there. He just looked like he got almost what I call behind the bike. He, he you know, started to tuck the front, and he had his foot caught behind him, and he went down. Oh, bummer for Hamaker. That's going to drop him way back. You go down on lap one. He's about 10. So here it is, Jet versus Hunter. And a lot different on the line choice as well. Jet looking for room. Yep, you can see Hunter continually working that outside line, and I saw earlier Jet in the first moto, Jet was working a lot of inside lines, so it's funny, they both, two brothers, but they do different lines uh, tendencies. I guess Jet, Jet seems to like the inside a lot better than Hunter does. So Hunter, the older brother, looking for his first overall win of the year, but has two straight moto wins in this series. It's come together for Jet in multiple ways this year, dominated the season opener, won both motos. Probably hasn't been the fastest rider the last two races, but by far he has been the most consistent. And they, in five out of seven motos so far this year, have been one, two. <laughs> that in itself is remarkable. But you talk about consistency. That's where I'm impressed so much with Hunter Lawrence's riding. His lap times are consistent. Consistently fast, but he does not very much. So if you're going to get around him, you're going to have to work for it. And Hunter pulling away a little bit now from his brother. So the first half of the track a little better for Jet. This section, Hunter has it completely dialed in. Yep, outside line there, carrying that lot of speed up that steep hill. Yep. Oh, this would be a statement if he could get away and go to the 1-1. Nine points is the gap between them in the series standing. So the title, we're just in the early stages of what we hope is going to be a season-long tussle between the brothers out of Australia. Hey, Justin Cooper lurking in third. And R.J. Hampshire, I was just looking back, and I mean, Justin Cooper normally gets good starts. First moto, just on the cusp of the top 10. This time, a little better start for just 32 bike. But R.J. Hampshire coming back from a pretty serious injury there. Spent some time in the hospital. First time back on the bike racing. Had to skip Thunder Valley, so hats off to R.J. Our FMF battle box. We've got 7th and 8th, which would be Romano on the 411. It's the first rider, and then right behind him, Styles Robertson, the rock star Husqvarna, and then Hamaker trying to make his way back through after going down to the first lap. Yep, puts a stop on uh, Nick Romano there, number 411. But uh, watching these riders, it's fun for me. I mean, th these guys were all part of the Team Dunlop Elite program as mini bike riders, some of them as small as their PW50 riders wow, coming through. Four or five years old. Yeah, and they've worked their way all the way through. And for me to, to see that, I mean, now I've been at Dunlop for 21 years, so it's it's for me to come through and watch these kids. I've seen a lot of them come up, even the Eli Tomax and the Justin Marshes. And, and uh, so it's it, it's neat to neat to see him make make all the way all the way to the pro class. Justin Cooper has eaten up the gap to Jet Lawrence and is now looking to make a pass. He is flying literally. Yeah, he's finding his pace again. He wasn't 100 percent healthy from his uh, heel injury, I believe it was, in the beginning part of the year, and now he's uh, starting to ride himself back into shape. And look at this. Oh, he's got it. He's on the inside. He doesn't want this Lawrence brothers one two, and he takes it from Jet. Yep, that's an aggressive. I uh, want to make sure that solidify that thing and then block him out. Send it down to Jason Thomas. So Justin Cooper didn't have the first motor that he wanted, but this second motor looks a lot better. Now what I noticed when he came in from the parade lap, they were actually making suspension changes after the parade lap. So that tells me that he wasn't really happy with the bike setting and they're really searching and he looks like he found exactly what he was looking for. Well to change it after the sight lap, I gotta imagine that he tried to hammer a lap at race speed or so, get a feel for it, change more. Yeah, he must not have been comfortable in the first moto and was opting for some sort of a change. Maybe they made the change and then he went out and tried it and didn't like it, or it was maybe in the right direction and needed to change far. Maybe JT can find out a little more scoop there, maybe a couple clickers here and there on the shock or something. Now Jet Lawrence is coming back after him, so he has reset it. And the three riders who were top three in points a year ago are top three in this race. And Justin Cooper trying to break up this Honda party up front. Jet almost able to show Cooper a wheel. Actually does. Oh, and Cooper takes him wide. 
<laughs> that was an aggressive move, no question. But, you know, Justin Cooper had the corner. It, it was a risky one for Jet to go around the outside and be on the outside of that berm there. But uh, he was able to check up and still continue on. Uh, Jet, as quickly as he got caught and passed, has definitely reset it now and trying to get back around Cooper. Let's show you the contact again. Yeah, Justin Cooper hit a little braking bump. It kicked up his rear, so he lost some of his braking ability. And then Hunter was able, or uh, Jet was able to capitalize and just about made that pass. But the full defensive mode by Justin Cooper. And look at the difference it has made. Hunter Lawrence now starting to get away while these two battle each other. Gap says 2.3 seconds. It looks like it's larger than that. Jet all over this track looking for room to get back around Justin Cooper. Let's send it back down to Jason Thomas. So you guys ask and I, uh, I deliver. Nice. I spoke with the uh, Monster Star Yamaha technicians and they said they went to a completely different shock altogether. So they were just doing a little bit of fine tuning, but the setting was completely different. Just trying to find an answer for this high point venue. Good job, JT, and good job, Star Racing. He is much better in this moto. Yep, sometimes you make a change, and, and it's worth it. I mean, obviously, Justin Cooper felt it was worth it because he was not happy with the bike in the first moto. Uh -oh. So, But, man, Jet Lawrence is all over it. But Justin Cooper's fighting back. He's not giving it, giving it up easily. Oh, Jet trying to tightrope walk it on the inside over that hump. Not able to get it done. Hey, they've closed right back up on Hunter. So early in that lap, bumping each other. Lost some time. They've closed right back at the leader. We could be looking at a three-rider duel. Yeah, I mean, I know that the clock, it doesn't look like it looks like Jet Lawrence might be the fastest one on the track, but at least the lap times officially, uh, Justin Cooper popped off at 2.06. That's the quickest one. That's a full second faster than Hunter. Well, you can see he was absolutely flying. And like I said, literally catches some air jumping down into these hills. He's not done. One Lawrence brother down. He wants the other. I do like the way he stayed real nice and tight around that first corner there. It's just a it's a big corner and the early the shorter distance is the inside if you can keep back on the power, which he was. So Cooper had the foot injury, cost him all of Supercross off the bike for almost five months. And then he said maybe spent so much time trying to get back in shape and get seat time, not enough setting up the motorcycle. Really well off out of the top ten season opener. It changed everything in the bike for round two, and he was on the podium. Shit! Where did that come from? Yeah. Side by side, he's got second. <laughs> that was uber aggressive, no question about it. He was given a little retaliation, I think, on that earlier sure. pass, uh, that pass attempt that Justin Cooper did. That was a great move by uh, by Jet to just capitalize on something that was uh, didn't look like it was there. Cooper's not giving up on it, and I cannot believe they've actually closed on Hunter while battling each other. Usually it goes the other way around. Take us through it again. Yeah, this is uh, this is a great move by Jet. We can see a little replay here. He just hop bunny hops in that inside. See, he used, used what was a bump, that the breaking bump that developed. He used it as a jump and was able to launch himself right in the inside and own the corner. Look at this, doing the same thing there. Boy, that was, uh, that was close. He... Uh, popped out of the inside rut into another rut but uh, we'll see he's definitely pushing trying to catch his brother yeah but he's got to deal with Cooper who's looking to get him back and he wisely moves to the right side of the racetrack because Cooper was building a case building momentum around the outside Jet able to stop it keeping his brother in sight and they pulled away it's Hampshire and Shimoda fourth and fifth yeah let's we'll see if Joe Shimoda can get make a little bit of a run on RJ Hampshire. He looked like he had great speed and that first one ended up on the final step of the podium. So we'll see what happens. It's your Honda HRC. That's the team manager. Lars Lindstrom watching this one quite intently and quite tensely. Let's send it down to JT. So Lars Lindstrom, you win the first moto in this class. You win the first 450 moto. You're running one, two in this moto and you sign Hunter Lawrence to a two year deal today. Now I have to congratulate you on the strategic timing. It may have been a little bit more expensive. You signed it after today's race. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it really makes uh, makes us look pretty smart when you, we, you know, announce that he's got a two year deal extension and then he's winning the race too. So uh, he's really delivering on everything that uh, that he signed for. Him and his brother both, and then obviously Chase, too. So, such, so far, a great day. I think we got to get Lars get back to watching because now we've got the teammates and the brothers almost wheel to wheel. Jet has found, should I use the joke? Yeah, Jet has found the afterburners. He's pulled back <laughs> away from Justin Cooper, and he wants to take the lead from his brother. Yeah, there's, uh, he's definitely pushing right now, and he wants that overall. And 
even though they're they're saying they're not quite at 100 percent they don't really seem like they're 100 percent physically they're close enough and jet saying i'm able to push all the way through the moto and starting to work some different alternative lines and uh, he's uh, making a run here two things happening which morris brother can get it but justin cooper he's got to serve notice he's got to try to keep them in sight and not get dropped because he looked racy at the beginning of this one when he passed Jet for second, but they're starting to march away. Down to the inside is going to be Jet. Hunter's been on the outside throughout this race. It worked. Yep, and that last lap right there was uh, Jet's best lap time. Did a 2.05, so that was his fastest lap of the race and obviously shows on the screen because he's closed it all right in and made, a, made his way around Justin Cooper. What everyone wanted to see early in the season, and by that, I just mean the first five motos. Jet was starting much better than Hunter. We had not seen them wheel to wheel. Last two motos, Hunter started much better than Jet. Finally, we have a battle for a win between them. This is what we've all wanted to see all, oh, yeah. all season long so far in these first four races, and it's uh, fun to watch. And what can you say about having two brothers at this level? Again, five of the first seven motos, they finished one, two. They're one, two in points. They're one, two in this race. Shout out to the, the family and the people around them. I know everybody says that, but they've got a really tight-knit group. And it has led to this. Jet leaping down the staircase. He's got the inside. I think he's going to have the lead. He absolutely no, has Hunter it from fights that point. Back, Brock. <laughs> Hunter has the outside. Boy, it's just been fun. They've been so many different lines, and they're taken just inside, outside. And... Yeah, I thought Hunter maybe had something brewing there to get him back. Not quite. So let's see. Can Jet pull away or can Hunter repass him? Fantastic action to high point. Oh, Hunter wants to spot back. Sometimes you just almost got to sit there and watch because it's yeah. just so exciting. It's... Oh, think of the fans here at high point. Huge crowd. These are two of the most popular riders, and they are putting on a show. And one we have not seen yet. Brother versus brother for the lead. And different lines all over this racetrack. Hunter is looking for his spot. This is the track where really the donut craze started for Hunter, isn't it? Uh, for Jet. Yeah, I mean, they had a poster Hunter. contest yeah. last year, yeah. <laughs> exactly, the poster contest. of uh, So, very popular rider, Jet Lawrence, and both of the Lawrence brothers are very popular and likable. No wonder they're popular, but it's, uh, this is, uh, Jet's got a little extra, extra love here at the High Point crowd. Now, Hunter, we're going to see that outside putting it to work from second place. Not enough to close back in. Yep. But I'll tell you what, Jet's not getting away, that's for sure. Somehow I think I've seen this picture before. You know, these two brothers have done this before on practice sessions, no question about it. They've, uh, they've battled closely many times, and they're starting to really checking out, uh, checking out away from uh, Justin Cooper sitting in third place. So if it ends like this, Jet Lawrence wins the overall. They'll tie on points. They'll both have a first and a second. The tiebreaker is the better second moto, but it's inconsequential right now. We have a lot of time left for these two to duke it out, and Hunter is giving him all he can handle halfway through this moto. 15 minutes down, 15 minutes to go. 15 minutes, you can save 15% or more on your insurance. Totally different line that we've seen no one use in this moto from Hunter. Yeah, I was kind of wondering if he was going to be able to work that line in, but it looks like that little knob in the inside is just, just enough of a handicap to not be able to make it work. So. Again, Hunter's trying all the outside. Earlier, we saw Jet doing all the outside. Now Jet went back to the inside, more defensive line, and Hunter's trying to do some more offensively, running all these wide outside lines, as we can see there on the screen. Yeah, it's tough to play it here. Is it a risk worth taking? You got to try something different when you're in second, but if you lose too much time, it's over. So Hunter's got to figure out how does he want to play it. And through that exchange, Jet was able to stretch it just a little bit. Yep, Jet, Jet just busted that berm apart, and Hunter <laughs> took Hunter just uh, tiptoed on the inside of it. Just two different approaches for almost the same line, but you can see the small just differences between the two, though. Deep ruts back here. Oh, Hunter tried to square it off. He did this track is just getting these ruts are getting deeper and deeper and they're changing throughout the whole race too. Can Hunter keep Jet in sight? A lot of it today coming down to the line choice. He loves this outside. You know, traditionally High Point always had a little bit of a shale rock in it, and sometimes, you know, being a tire guy, we used to see got to be careful cutting tires, flat tires. But in the last years, they've really worked a lot of that 
rock out of the soil and have just added more, looks like topsoil. You can see some clay coming through there, but this conditions are just fantastic. Hunter has closed it back up. And another lap down. 13 minutes and two laps left between the brothers. Yep, Hunter's not giving up. And we talked about that earlier, how Hunter just consistently is able to run strong pace for all 30 minutes plus two laps. And this is not changing right here. He's not giving up. And it's this section here where he took a pretty radical line. It didn't work, so now he's doing the wise thing. He's just going to follow his brother through and keep it close and find another area to attack. Look at those S-turns after this staircase. He's had some speed, so let's see how it transpires. Yeah, you're exactly right on that, Weejit. When you, you have maybe 16, 17, 18 Latin corners on the track, you might find all sorts of different alternative lines. You might try some, some work, some don't work, but then you finally narrow it down and say, okay, I got three spots or four spots that are a little quicker. Stick to those, and the rest of the time, I just need to follow whatever Jet's doing. Uh, it's going to be so good down the stretch between the Lawrence brothers. Got to take a quick break here on Mav TV, but don't go anywhere. It's the battle we wanted to see all year long. Battle continues. Jet able to slip away in that one turn, and then Hunter gets it back. He does. You can see right now there's just a, each rider has a little bit of a strong spot or portion of the track and the other rider might be a little faster. Now the lapped rider may jet check up a little bit. Hunter's able to get closer. Ooh, and he's could pushing. Be he's pushing hard. Absolutely. <laughs> Edging to the inside and he loves this outside. This is the closest he has been. He's going to dive bomb it. Big run by Hunter. Not enough. Yeah, that outside line's kind of losing a little bit of its mojo, but Hunter's still trying to make it work. And Jet able to wheelie through that corner and use that inside. Now, who's got the guts to lead the brakes off down the hill? Hopping the bumps. Great run by Hunter. You saw that exactly, kind of easing off the brakes. The harder you break, the more deeply the suspension goes into the stroke and then it actually doesn't work as well. And Hunter was able to just kind of release maybe 10, 20% of the brake just to release the suspension, let it back, get back to working properly. And uh, it really showed. This has been as good as advertised. We knew they would be closely matched. Jet cannot get away. Yep, yep, this is where we saw a different, uh, a different line, but The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Motosport.com. Make your next ride your best ride. And by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. And the, fa the fantastic battle continues between the Lawrence brothers. No change in the order. Jet in the red gear, Hunter in the blue gear, dealing with lap traffic and dealing with each other. We wanted to see them start together and battle the whole way. We're getting it today at High Point. Yep, the two Honda riders just going wheel to wheel this whole time. And now the lapped riders are starting to really play into this, uh, this race. And it could go either way. And maybe Hunter sitting behind can follow and use one of those lap riders to his advantage and squeak by his brother. Oh, laying it over in that corner. Oh, hey, their trainer, Johnny O'Mara, former team Honda rider, was with Jason Thomas. JT. So I'm down here with the Osho, Johnny O'Mara. As you said, trainer and riding coach of both of the Lawrence brothers. Now, the last few weeks, they've been a little bit under the weather. Certainly doesn't look that way today. No, they're feeling a little bit better this week. Not, not 100%, but definitely, as you can see, they're spreading out there. And it's just between the two brothers, you know, like I think everyone knows that they're under my program and they train the same. They're on the same machinery and they both want to win very bad. So we've got to ask the question, who's going to get it done? Uh, like, I really can't answer it. We, uh, I want both boys equal amount. Like, literally, sure, Jets won the first four, but Hunter doesn't want to give any more points up to Jet, so it's going to be a battle all summer. And it was a battle right there, and it was the downhill. Hunter Lawrence makes the pass. Yeah, we were talking about that exact hunt, that lap earlier. Hunter looked like he just kind of realized when you charge real hard, just ease off the brakes, let the suspension work, and the bike actually flowed a little better. For some reason, you just able to find the extra amount of speed down there, made it work, and then really kind of put the move on Jet. Jet had to pop out of the rut. Jet has to answer back now. Eight minutes to go, and Jet does. A tremendous speed on the staircase. 
Oh, they risked it all, and Hunter just able to hold him off. Jet just, he's not afraid to pin it down no. that staircase. He's got a little extra speed there over Hunter, and, and Hunter has a little more where he made the pass, so. We'll take you through it again on the downhill. Right, carrying some extra speed there. Gets off to the riders right, our left on the screen. Releases the brakes a little bit more, jumps inside, and then looks like Jet just didn't get right there and makes a little bobble on the exit, but didn't, didn't slow him down much. He's fighting, fighting a quarter lap later. He's fighting for the lead again. Hunter's going to try to put this one away. He's putting in a dead sprint. He's opened it up to about a second over his brother. Yep. So let's see if Jet can respond. It's ETS drone cam. Jet's going to try to reset and close back in. Yep, this is a section where they're in and out of the shadows of the trees here at the High Point Raceway. So visibility can be a little bit of a problem. These guys got young eyes. I'm sure they're better than, <laughs> better than you know, most of the older people when you're talking, thinking about coming in the corners and stuff. But uh, it's, uh, man, oh, man, this is fun to watch. They're multiple oh, lines, incredible. Yeah, this is about as racy as a motocross track is going to get. I mean, they are in different sections in almost every corner. There's the downhill we talked about earlier. See that berm is getting, a, it's getting a big hook in it, and it caught Jet last lap. So Jet changed lines wisely, and now he's starting to realize that hopefully Hunter uh, makes an adjustment for the next lap. Jet might be the chance to pass him. Also, Hunter, he takes that wide line before they reach what we used to call Bradshaw Boulevard, and it was definitely quicker Hunter on the inside. So he's got to try to change lines while leading because Chet has closed back in. This is spectacular. Just stuffing it in there at the bottom of that wooden board corner there, and it just, you could tell, I'm sure, the dirt and the boards. And you can feel that when you hit that board, trust me. Hey, Hunter didn't get the double oh. over the tunnel, and that allows Chet to pull up alongside. Now, jet has been on the other side of the track most of the time. It's flipped now. Can he go around the outside and make it work? Not quite yet, but he's on the inside now. Jet's got the pass there, and it's Unreal. Un unbelievable. They switched lines because that was Jet, that uh, was Jet's trump card before, where he was able to go down the right hand side there and carry extra speed. So then Hunter got on that side, but then Jet was still able to make the, the pass work on the outside of the next corner. And Hunter had a spot where he could have got him back, but he got his leg caught and couldn't quite double downhill like he had been doing so now it's his turn to try to reset look we've talked about how it's been super friendly between the brothers they were jt saw them throwing the football around yesterday hanging out but we've not seen a knockdown drag out battle between them yet and you can see how badly they want to beat each other they definitely want to beat each other and uh we talk about the you know they come they're, they're what, some of the only riders that really spend all day on Friday at the track. Every time I've been here all day on Friday, these two brothers are there, like you mentioned. Talked about them playing cornhole together. A little got real competitive there at Thunder Valley. Yesterday, they're throwing in a football around. So they do. They hang out at the track together. They spend all the time there. So, But there's no question. Hunter, Hunter wants to be able to beat his brother and vice versa. Yep. And that win streak, Jet Lawrence undefeated so far. He's got the downhill figured out this time as we go back to the beta drone cam. And he's got to protect on the inside. That rut is straight nasty. It's gotten real nasty. The early part of the berm is pushed away. The mid part, for some reason, held its own. And so now it's got a double hook in the middle of the berm. And these guys are starting to figure it out, working their way around it, not going so deeply into the berm to, to where it completely stops their momentum. But it's still not the, not the, not the ultimate shape corner yet. No, but I, I don't think Jet wanted to go around it. He doesn't want to leave the inside unprotected, so he's got to hit that thing. Yep, squaring it up here. Yep, getting getting ready for the, the old tunnel jump there, double jumping down. And here's the infamous high point track section here, the stair step downhill. How will Hunter play it? Looking for something different. Nice smoother line there on the outside. Now, this is where he's had something different brewing. Will he hook all the way to the inside? No, he's going to choose to follow. Yep, earlier they were actually taking an inside line, and now that inside line. So you can see the ruts just crisscrossing everywhere. These guys, it, it's not easy doing what they're doing. I mean, jumping every one of these ruts and trying to negotiate. And they mentioned earlier from, uh, I think Hunter was saying that the track didn't flow quite as well as he remembered it the years before, but it's still very raceable, maybe more raceable than I've seen it in the past. What a fantastic race this track has led to. 
I can't even keep track. Is this the fourth time that they flopped the lead and the other rider has had to respond? Something like that, maybe five times. It's on Hunter now to keep pace and try to attack his brother again. Yeah, just Jet just looks so comfortable on the bike when you watch him standing on the pegs. Just smooth as can be. Looks like his line selection. I like to how he kind of focuses through the corner before he gets into that rut, knows where he's going to go. You can see right when he hits the berm, he knows he's in the right spot. He starts looking up further down the track. It's a very smooth rider. Can Hunter do it? Can he close back in? Here's the critical downhill where he made the pass a few laps ago. And here's that rut on the inside we we're talking about. It ain't pretty. Oh, they tried to get out of it. Yeah, I like the way Jet just did hit, the, hit that berm and kind of just let the suspension rebound and help him pop out of the corner. But these guys are neck and neck. Yeah. You got lappers all around them. Oh, yeah, Hunter's complete. right back there, and that really held up Jet. You have complete chaos all around him with these lapped riders. Jet looks over to see where that lapped rider is because he wants to block him, kind of maybe get, give him the little, I call it the stink eye, but he's giving him like, hey, man, <laughs> you're battling with the leaders here. Cooper still third, Shimoda, Moseman up to fifth, Hamaker sixth after an early crash, Hampshire, Robertson, Brown, Bolin round out the top ten. Obviously this photo we have been dead focused on this unreal battle for the race win between the Lawrence brothers, the youngsters out of Australia. They have certainly taken the American racing scene by storm, but this is next level what they've done today. It is. They've uh, now they're really starting to separate themselves. I mean, they got 15 seconds uh, from their third place. Justin Cooper and they've got 30 seconds on fourth place Joe Shimoda. Hunter's going to need a mistake here from Jet. That exchange through lap traffic actually worked out better for the number one. So Hunter goes to work, finding new lines again. Minute and a half for the two lap to go sign comes out. Yeah, if Hunter wants any chance of uh, doing the overall here and beating his brother, he's going to have to pick up the pace. Get back in contact. It's he's trying. I mean, he's there. Anybody can do it. He's the one on the field that can do it. Well, this is what we've been left with, a tie in the overall points between the brothers if it ends like this, but the tiebreaker is the better Moto2, so Jet Lawrence would have it, and with that, it would be four straight wins to start the season. Does Hunter have anything left to go after him? I know Hunter has something left, there's no question, but does he have the speed left? And that's a, different, that's a totally different question, but he's trying right here. Got one lap rider in between them. He's going to have to get around that rider quickly, but uh, Jet is starting to inch away downhill lap traffic no problems this time so the lead continues to stretch yeah looking back at the top five i see michael mosman has now worked his way into the top five another guy that did not get two good starts today and had to work his way seth hamburger slipped back to six but uh, again we're just all eyes are on the first two riders and hunter lawrence negotiating that tricky ruddy section now it's two seconds, though. About the biggest elite has been through this photo, which is hard to believe. They've been that close the entire time. Yep, I like the way Jet's really riding well. He comes through those corners. He uses his extra height, gripping the tank with his knees. He's doing a terrific job. He is starting to stretch it. Jet Lawrence looking to start the year with four straight overall wins. And there's two and a half laps separating him from that four race win streak back in 2019 in this series with adam seen cerullo and he did go on to win this championship that year 2019 and jet is looking good now what a battle though and on this track one mistake you give that 2.8 seconds right back but something has changed yeah earlier i was talking about how jet just really uses his knees really well. He stands on the pegs, but when he gets in this section, he starts gripping the tank, gripping his knees together, uses his extra height just to be really smooth in that section. It controls the bike with, with effortless. You don't have to use so much upper body muscle and strength. So he's able to save energy and uh, conserve his energy throughout the race. And it's just technique. Try to, others should emulate. He has always been wise beyond his years, only 18 years old. Uh, but uh, yes, in Supercross, he's had some crashes, no doubt about it. But here at Motocross, hasn't had many big ones the entire time he's raced. This is really his third full pro season. And he rides like a veteran at times. Like you said, sometimes less is more. Well, the Lawrence family, 
literally packed up everything, moved to Europe. Hunter was chasing the world championship, but young Jet had the opportunity to be amongst all the top world championship riders. And uh, he was able to practice with them and learn, and it was a great job. That is Shimoda and Mosman battling in the FMF Battle Box, a drone cam on the lower right. Mosman trying to take fourth away. Shimoda be sitting on an overall podium either way, but championship points are paid per moto, so he doesn't want to let him buy. Yep, seems like, you know, this is going to be a broken record a little bit. Mosman got but, him. Yep. Moseman showing lots of speed, yes. po definitely podium speed, no question about it, but the inconsistency in starts or bike problems or he's just been, he's just been, like, I don't even know how to say, he's just been bit but bad luck and bad misfortune the whole season, it seems like. Yes, so he's looking at potentially fourth in this moto now that they made the pass and fourth overall. Uh, hard to believe he didn't have any podiums. Uh, overall in this season yet the kind of speed he has had yeah that's a remarkable statement right there but also it's remarkable is how many different ways jet lawrence is trying to win an overall yes. i mean he's either a one one or a two two or he's done it so many different ways and then uh has he had is he had a two one yet <laughs> i don't think he has so okay. here we go we'll, we'll, we'll mix it up for him uh, i think it was a three one that got him a hang town so yeah <laughs> so, this could be a this could be a fourth way to do the same thing win the overall but uh, again i'm going to reiterate the fact that the championship is 24 separate motos that are counted really as individual races points pain races overalls are fun but you don't you don't win a championship and you don't earn any points on, your, on the overalls you don't win uh, any extra points but there is big win money bonus from Honda, you betcha. Yeah. And that's what the Lawrence brothers were fighting over in addition to series points. It's going to end up even up championship-wise today. They'll both have a second and a first. So it was a 12-point lead for Jet coming in. Probably, if it ends like this, will end that way. But the bigger paycheck is going to go to the guy that won. So, so when you go to the Lawrence house and you look in the piggy banks of the kids, you're saying that <laughs> Jet... I honestly would be surprised Jet still has them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jet's young enough to maybe have a piggy bank, and his is a little full as he takes the white flag with just one more lap to win, to be able to put the put the icing on the cake of a fourth overall of the year. Yeah, his piggy bank is bigger than most 18-year-olds. I can tell you that much. Uh, he already has a national championship from last year and a Super Mantra Energy Supercross championship from this year. Working on another. Wait a minute. No. Hunter is putting in a last lap gasp. It was 3.8 seconds. No. It's down to 1.4. Hey, Hunter's got a lot of fighting. I'd go to war with that guy in my team any time. Nice. Yeah, he's a, he's a fighter. And Jet's not slowing down, trust me. He's, you can see right there, even on that little bump, he's almost scrubbing it on that stair step coming down there. And Hunter is pushing hard. Oh, he is throwing it out there on the final lap. It took about two laps there where Jet pulled away, thought it was over. Ah, they can't get that double right now. That run has just become too difficult. I mean, why would why would Hunter hold back yep. right now? It's the last lap of the second moto, and if he makes that pass, he wins overall. And his piggy bank's bigger, so he's going to lay it on the line, and he's certainly doing that. And we get to we get to be privy to watching this. Oh, it's going to be a fight right down to the end. Jet's going to have to pick it up because Hunter is absolutely pinned on this final lap, and he's got it down to about five bike lengths. And there is room for passing back here. Fans love this. They're going to give it to you for the full 30 and two. Yep, tricky off camber. Hunter tries a little different line on the inside. Look to make, gain another bike length or two. Here we go, downhill, and then back up. Yep, and then we go down to that tricky corner down here in the shade. We talked about it over and over. This is a tough corner down here just before the old Bradshaw Boulevard. Hunter is uses outside the entire moto. Could it pay off for him on the last lap? Little mistake by Jet. Hunter's close. Leading up to the downhill. Oh boy. Downhill coming up that he made the pass earlier. You Pit, know he wants at, it here. Right here. Who's going to leave the brakes off to the bottom of the hill? Oh, Jet does a great job of he did. countering there. And Hunter sent it. Jet able to respond. Oh, last turn goodness. coming up. Last Hunter's corner. pulling back up on him. <laughs> Checkers in sight. <laughs> Jet Lawrence oh, meets Hunter man. Lawrence by a half second. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. That was unbelievable. What a race. As good as you'll ever see it. Regardless of who it is, the fact that they're brothers and teammates makes it that much better. Half a second. Oh, what a last lap by Hunter Lawrence. That was fantastic. I'm telling you, he's got to just be proud of that effort he put in, but also just madly frustrated. 
Yeah, it's confidence either way, though. They both know that could have gone either way, and there's plenty more motos to go where Hunter will have the chance to even the score. Today, they'll end up tied up points, 2-1, 1-2, but Jet will get the overall for the fourth straight week with the tiebreaker in Moto2. You want to read the body language of the brothers after this one. There it is. Yeah, but I want to pull that helmet off, Hunter. I want to see, I want to see how frustrated oh, yeah. or he's just like, man. What a race. All the way down to the end, there's their agent, Lucas Myrtle, to congratulate both of them. There's, of course, Johnny O'Mara in the black hat, the trainer, to immediately start downloading the information. Yep. What a battle. What a battle. And you know the fans love this one, too. And don't worry, folks. Plenty more opportunity to see more of that, more where that came from. Stay with us. We'll talk to them. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Optima Batteries. The The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. And by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. That's what it's like to ride around High Point Raceway and the Lucas Stabilizer High Point National. It's GoPro course preview. We just had one of the best races you will ever see in this sport, and it was between two brothers and teammates. Lucas Oil race recap. Seth Hamaker had the starts dialed today in his home state race. Two motosport.com hole shots today. But he had the Lawrence's Chet on the number one and Hunter on the 96 right with him. He made it a little easier on them because he would go down early in the race while leading. It would be a tricky left hand uh, off camber here. Yep, right here in the shadows of the trees down here at High Point Raceway. I don't know what exactly caused that to go down, but Seth went down by leading and uh, handed over to the Lawrence brothers. To... Now we had a brief challenge of Justin Cooper, who from third caught Jet Lawrence and passed him, and then started making tracks toward Hunter, but the Lawrence brothers wanted it to be a solo effort between them today, and Jet would eventually get Cooper back. Very aggressive pass right here on Justin Cooper and made his statement there and set his sights out on his older brother, Hunter. And once Jet put it together, he was able to close the gap go after Hunter, and I can't even keep track of how many passes between them. Chet was awesome on this downhill. He was. He was very, very fast and just pushed it right there in the end. Made a move, but they just battled back and forth, and Hunter never gave up. No, he was good on this other downhill, and he's able to skip right past his brother here. So now Hunter into the lead again. Yep, and again, then Jet, of course, retaliated with this move here, switching lines, going around the opposite side, the outside, and making a move. Unbelievable, has the lead, and at one point would begin to pull away just a bit, and then in the last lap, Hunter comes back. What an incredible last lap Hunter put on, and it was all the way down to just within a few, a half a bike length or a bike length at the finish line. It was so close, less than that. half a second. Almost bumped tires in the last turn, Jet wins by .553 seconds, a half second between them, high five, and then they start bench racing. This is gonna be really fun. We'll get both of them together here on the podium. Jason Thomas, take it away. So I have both of the Lawrence brothers down here in one of the most unbelievable races I've ever seen. Now, Hunter, you might disagree with that, I understand, but as a true fan of the sport, thank you for putting out such a great effort. No, it's all right. I'll, uh, I'll get him back another day for sure. It was cool, we traded motos today. Uh, it's Father's Day, so um, hopefully uh, we gave Dad uh, the best Father's Day he could have, you know, one and two, and a cool moto. So I uh, hope the fans enjoyed it. You guys were awesome. We could hear you the whole way around the track, and thanks to everyone that's made this sport so great. Now, Jet, I think you may have upset Big Brother, but that's the way it's got to be. Somebody's got to win the race, and uh, just an unbelievable race you guys had. Yeah, I, uh, I, had to, I had to get him because uh, if not, he would have gained some points on me, so at least we tied. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the crowd, that's awesome. Like Hannah said, happy Father's Day to dads. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. This, uh, we, uh, we love you guys. We hope we, uh, hopefully we gave Dazzy a good race and a bit of a heart attack. But uh, no, it's a, it, it was a sick race. I mean... 
I relaxed for a quick second and Hunter jumped down the inside and I have to I, I have to admit I, even though I got past that was pretty sick so uh but no nah, thanks to the team uh congrats to Hunter also uh I got to that one so beat it no I'm just kidding but um no happy to go away and not lose any points or, or gain any so I mean it's a good weekend oh that's great and there's gonna be more that's the best part I can tell you right now I think Red Bud Ticket sales just went through the roof because <laughs> that was one of the best races we've seen in a long time. Oh, yeah. And you know Hunter's going to want to flip the script at the next one. And this 50th anniversary is not disappointing. These We've had such fantastic racing so far this season. Yep. And that is now six times, uh, sorry, eight times that they've been one, two in the motos. That's unbelievable what they have done and what Honda has done as well. That is our 250 class. We'll be right back with 450 Moto 2 round out that day. Honda looking for another win there for Brock Glover and Jason Thomas. I'm Jason Wygant. Congrats to both Hunter and Jet Lawrence putting on a great show today. We'll be right back, 450 Moto 2.